I just remembered actually that uh, I forgot to turn off the volume on the computer, so I should do that right now. But we are live. Yay! Live, so. <laughs> live at the Country Squire. Liar. Sunday, Sunday, Monday, Monday, Monday. We're not trying to sell cars here. <laughs> I don't think. Are we trying to sell cars now? Uh, is that it, a part of our business plan? Can we? Can we? I, <laughs> do you know there Chrysler, is Chrysler, if you'd like to support this no, 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 no. show. Do you know there is a, a car from the 70s yes. called the, the Country, Country Squire. Squire? Yes. And yes. people people make that association occasionally. They'll come in and be like, I used to have one of those. Uh-huh. And it's like, it's like the most foul-looking station wagon with that like real faux wood grain along the side you know go, now, go, y'all google it it's a, it's a it's called the country squire here's the crazy thing i don't know who made it like dodge if, or something like, like for the Plymouth. longest time like now you know two years in we're we're we're, we're an established brand but yeah country squire radio when you used to do a google search for it were people selling radios from that car model <laughs> I'm being dead serious, man. Like that's, that's fantastic. I, sometimes when people say they happen upon our show by accident, I yeah. wonder if like that's that's what they mean. You, is they're they were, googling vintage, uh, crummy, I don't know, Chryslers or something. Maybe. All right. I don't so know who made that? I want to double check, make sure. Okay, good. We are showing up live. What's that? You make me so nervous when you do that. So close to the equipment. Oh my goodness. All right. Let's see. All right. Well, we are. I think about ready to get started. I should probably pull up the show notes and all that kind of good stuff. But for those of you who are tuning in, of course, we are doing this at a little bit of a different time as we've done in the past whenever we've done it here at the Country Squire, uh, which is really exciting. Uh, the feedback was pretty positive on doing it from the shop, so we're going to try to do this a little more often. It's been fun. You know, our, the first time we did this was, uh, I guess, our 100th episode. That's right. Right, Bo? That's right. Yeah, and I, I don't know. We've experimented a few times since then, but it's... uh. Yeah, so far been good. Oh man, it's been good. The new setup doesn't allow me to see the show notes from the uh, <laughs> from the new from the new account. A lot of changes going on. A lot of a lot of good. Not a lot of changes. I shouldn't say that, but a lot of really good stuff on the horizon. What new? Well, you know, we've got the the new dedicated YouTube channel, which we're going to talk about in a minute. Right. right. Um, but that has that means that I don't have access to the Google Docs that I used to have access to while we done while we. While we've done the show, whoops! Yep. Can you you just got it on a browser? Yeah, so I can I can just switch on switch on out. Need to get uh, some things all situated here. You doing all right? You doing good? Yeah, I'm good. You know, weather has been crummy around here. Oh, and, the weather and so outside is frightful. Is crummy, and uh, yeah, you know. So I was surprised that today was actually a relatively busy day at the shop. We had uh, you know, quite a few people come in and. A lot of you, a lot of folks just hanging out today, which was great. You know, yeah. then it's nice to bad to be outside. You know, it's uh nice to be at the squire. It's always nice to be at the squire. Man, you had a good crew in here when uh when I walked in the door, mm -hmm. which is always great. I mean, Monday that Monday is a good good squire day, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. On the regular, here we go. CSR show notes. Look at that. <laughs> Back in business. Do you have do you have access to them? Are you able to pull them up on your phone? Yeah, I got them. Great, because we've got some great um, commentary from uh, from the folks. And let me do this real quick. Um, you know, so here's the thing: I was actually just sharing with John David before we went live that uh, I'm a little nervous tonight because we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, of course, you know, just doing things in the shop anyway is a little bit differently. Yeah, but uh, but also we've got kind of a new channel. And so, you know, I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know how it's all going to work. I'm looking for uh, some Twitter, uh, some Twitter feedback. So um, y'all, y'all make sure I've got the Twitter hint, the, the Twitter account pulled up. So as we uh, do the show tonight, y'all be sure to be good to us. Let us know how things are going. Uh, if you're hearing us okay, um, we need to know that. <laughs> so that'll be, uh, that'll be really good. Yeah, let me get my old uh, <laughs> Twitter pulled up here. That's a good thing. I love having the peanut gallery handy. You know? Oh yeah! Oh yeah. look, they are they are tech support. Yeah, that's the beautiful thing. You guys are awesome. Assuming that you can hear us, which I'm pretty sure you can hear us. I should probably double check that in just a minute. Uh, the Mark longest, Ferrar like, is very sure. happy to uh, be with us. Tonight. I saw that. What's up, Mark? Yeah, hope hope you're doing well, Mark. It's great to hear, great to hear from you. All right, let me do this one little test, and then once we do that, we'll be ready to get started. Um. All right, look at that. There's us. There we are. Isn't that something? How about that? 
All right, you ready to do this? Yeah. Welcome to Country Squire Radio. I'm Bo. And I'm John David. JD. Hey, Bo. What's up, man? Man, how you doing this evening, sir? You know, I'm doing fine. It's, uh, you know, as we were kind of discussing pre-show, it's, uh, yeah, I've been kind of, kind of crummy weather around central Mississippi recently. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> man, I've been, uh, you know, kind of, kind of doing this and that, but uh, enjoying the company of the Squire and uh, things are going well. You know, the weird thing is you say that it's been bad weather, but we had like a crazy drought for months on end. Yeah. And oh, so, yeah. you know, in kind of a, uh, a funny turn of events, we finally get rain and that's all we get nonstop then, all right, the time. Right. Fe- yeah. The old, the old feast or famine uh, uh, saying, but yeah, it's funny. My, my house, you know, if y'all listen to us long enough, you know, Bo and I, we live in this historic neighborhood part of Jackson. That's and right. so uh, our houses are, you know, constantly uh, needing repair and this kind of thing. But the, the, the drought did such a number on my foundation, man. I've got these huge, giant caverns that have opened up all over in the brick and stuff. I didn't realize that that was what... All right, this That's has it. also happened at our house That's as well. It. In yeah. fact, like there's a gate into my into my yard that for the longest time during the summer would not open because it was so like mashed up against the side. Yeah. And then just all of a sudden one day... You can open it up just there. Fine. It is, yeah. And but I, the but the front of your house is like falling out. Yeah, yeah. Mississippi <laughs> mud. You know, that's 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 it, man. That's uh, you it. know, as I like to say, Bellhaven Real Estate. Get it while it's there. Get it right. <laughs> get it while it's there. That's exactly right. Because it's going to float downstream. Exactly. No, yeah. look, I love living in the neighborhood we live in. And hey, you know what? This is kind of great because normally we actually do broadcast from my uh, my home studio. That's right. Uh, but tonight, per the uh, Pontestery Studios, of course, and and per you know your. Uh, you know, you you've just been really kind of about bringing the uh, the listeners into the shop. Yeah, and uh, and you know there. There's a lot of people, of course, a lot of you that tune in live to the uh, the YouTube channel. We really re- uh, greatly appreciate y'all. But even for the listeners, I mean, it kind of gives a little bit more of an ambiance when we are actually in the shop. And tonight, we are actually in the shop. We're at the shop. Yeah, yeah. it's kind of fun because as we reference things, you know, they're they're right here amongst us. You know, and uh, yeah, we like that a lot. We're also trying something a little bit different tonight, and I'll go ahead and make mention of this. Pull the curtains back, Let if you the will. Cat out of the bag. We've got a uh, we've got a live studio audience here. Y'all say hey. <laughs> I'm sure that did not pick up on the mic. <laughs> anyway, so we'll see how that ends up going as yeah, well. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, all right, man. So we got a lot of uh, good news and just kind of updates, things that have been going on here. Uh, yeah. Of course, you know, for the last couple of weeks, we were mentioning that we had the Long Smoke competition. Um, this is really, of course, a, a very personal subject matter to me because as yeah, you yeah. know, if you've been listening for quite some time, uh, I was shamed. Uh, shamed in the pipe community and, yeah. and the the mass group of people that are out there that were uh, making fun of me from all corners of the universe uh, who have been listening to this podcast. Yeah, it was kind of like the scarlet letter on your, on your right. you know, torso for the past year has been like, you know, four minutes, four minutes. Four minutes. <laughs> and so here's that's the, right. That's, I cannot keep my pipe lit. <laughs> but well, I, yeah, I want to say like you, you know, you have set yourself resolutely uh, towards Jerusalem, as it were, and 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 Jerusalem in this case being right, keeping your pipe lit uh, for for more than four for minutes. more than four minutes. Yeah, <laughs> Look, here's the thing, because and, I mean, and, and and you've accomplished that. We, we when we were in New Orleans, I said, you know, I did quite well. I actually beat you. I, I always love to remind people of that. I, we don't have to talk. About no, I, but I like to I like to say it anyway. Uh, so I actually beat you, and I beat several other people, and was in the like the like the top ten of, of of the people that were there. But one way or the other, it didn't matter because it was all about coming home and bringing home, you know, the respect and gaining the respect back here in the Magnolia Pipe Club. Yeah, I think a lot of folks were like, oh, Bo, that's nice. You know, you went down there and everything, but, you know, you, you, you've got to come back to the home turf in, in, your, in your home stadium and, and do it upright. And, well, and everybody was talking about that Katrina weather that we were experiencing, kind of that, uh, uh, what do you call it, the um, the remnants of Katrina. Yeah, a little blustery down on the, uh, in the, you know, close to downtown new orleans yeah i mean, I mean it, was, it was it was rough it was very windy yeah, yeah. but i mean you, you did it you did a good job there and you came back and uh what was your time at the long smoke that we just had here in jackson all right so this is good when i was in new orleans i did 20 minutes on the dime like it was just 20 minutes straight up here 20 minutes and 13 seconds so i'm moving in the right direction well done man yeah, yeah. i mean well done well here's the cool That's thing a solid 13 se- what did you have to do to gain that 13 seconds <laughs> remember i did beat you so <laughs> 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 and I did not compete in our uh, in our contest here exactly. because I was judging it, exactly. and I'm judging you right now. Oh well, and I am <laughs> judging you as well. So <laughs> what else is new, right? <laughs> uh, but no, here's the great thing: while we were doing the long smoke competition here, which was a huge turnout. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just great, great turnout from I think everybody. We had that we about saw. 55 people. Is that right? Yeah, it was it was huge. Yeah, about about 28 folks were competing. 
Uh, and we had a just a really uh, it was a lot of fun, even though the weather weather didn't cooperate. But yeah, about fifty five. Well, I was talking to Kim briefly uh, before everything got started, and she was like, "Man, I'm just reminded about how quickly this place gets filled up." Because I mean, it was just you know completely packed. Uh, everybody was you know there was there was standing room only. Yeah. In yeah. fact, I think probably some of the competitors actually had to stand up as well. I I don't remember that, although that could have been that the could case. have been the case. But yeah, it was interesting. You know, if you've ever been to a long smoke competition, you'll know. But uh, you know it, that moment that everyone lights their match at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, it's that big, you know, uh, hiss going all over the room, and there's just sulfur just everywhere. There's a <laughs> cloud of sulfur. You yeah. know, and uh, yeah, it was just it was fantastic. You know, we had a we had a really good time. Uh, yeah, the winter time uh, this year was actually only 58 minutes. It was our yeah. friend Caleb Crawford, a uh, good guy. He's only 21. And, yeah, uh, he dude. beat like some people that have been smoking their pipe for, you know, 40 years. Big so, ups to Caleb. He did a wonderful he job. He did a great job. Won a beautiful Daverin uh, pipe. And um, yeah, we. I, I want to give take a moment just to thank the sponsors sure. for uh, that long smoke competition. Um, first and foremost, like Petter Jeppesen with Nirup. I can't say enough about that guy. Yeah, like he, he is such a good friend of our shop. And uh, if you haven't smoked a Nero pipe, you're really missing out. Like th this is one of the best values in the pipe world. I think every single Nero is completely unique. Um, you know, they're hand finished and he's got a really interesting way of working in different uh, stains and textures and all this kind of thing. And um, yeah, I, I just, I can't thank him enough. He was a, a banner sponsor for us and, uh, we're very thankful for that. Uh, what two two near it pipes were given out as as winning pipes, and that was great. Uh, Daverin Denovic pipes, uh, which are distributed by International Block and Briar uh, here in the United States, uh, they were gracious enough to donate one of their uh, real high end uh, Daverin uh, Adriatic uh, Briar pipes, which was super. Uh, Daverin's kind of known for his Morta pipes, but uh, yeah. this was one of his Adriatic Briars, and it was it was beautiful. And yes, then, really, really cool. It was like it's huge, though. You know, any Daverin pipe any is gonna Daverin. it's gonna be a, like a golf club. He's he's equipping basically. you to defend yourself. Yeah, you need you really yeah. need a permit to to carry this thing. <laughs> um, and, and then finally, I, I I can't thank enough our friend Two Combs with Rocks Pipes, mm -hmm. uh, our local homegrown talent here in Mississippi that uh, just did such a great job. It was really nice to the the pipe that he submitted for the winter pipe uh, actually was a, a natural sandblast, but it had a really elegant uh, magnolia uh, wood ring on the on the as a band. Perfect and, for and, the magnolia. Yeah, just pipe just club. beautiful. You know, our our state flower here is the magnolia, and magnolias are kind of everywhere. That's our thing, and uh, yeah, it was just really really a nice touch. So, uh, but anyway, I had a great time. Uh, thanks to all our sponsors for helping out with that, and uh, congrats to Caleb for winning. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's yeah. Absolutely, man. Yeah. And congrats to Bo. I mean, 20 minutes and 13 seconds. You know, I think and that's that pretty was, good. And, and you can't, I mean, there was, there were several people that went out before you. I think I redeemed myself. I, I, right. I did take a good picture with the, uh, the loser just to, yeah. You know. And then, and then you, and then you followed up by shaming the, this person's. No, did, I just did prepared you put the, him for no, the no, shame. No, it was shame. Did you, did you, did you bring the dunce cap with you to? <laughs> no, I, I, I kind of regretted not bringing the shell along the, with me. The old but, shell. <laughs> you know, one that way could be a thing. We could pass the shell down. Like I between, thought about that, but yeah. I kind of, I kind of like, nah, you want I like to wear it as a badge of honor to some extent. It's just, it's, it's just, it represents a time in my life and I, I don't want to miss that. Yeah. Yeah, if you um, haven't seen this, it's a giant shell, uh, seashell. It's like an ashtray. Conk ashtray that's yeah. got a pipe holder on the side of it. it. Looks like it came out of the Golden Girls apartment or <laughs> something. Does. That's exactly what it, it looks just, like. It's just the most god awful thing you've ever seen. But yeah. uh, so Bo won that with a, a beautiful corn cob pipe. Yeah, uh, last year. Well, I don't think I got the corn cob pipe. That would have been awesome. But no, I just yeah, got no. the uh, <laughs> just got the shell. Uh, but no, here's the thing. So while we were doing the long smoke competition, I did a periscope. Yeah. All right. So you you familiar with periscoping, right? Yeah, absolutely. All right. So so um, <clears throat> I, I'm I've done periscopes before on my my live account with, you know, when we were developing Satchel, I actually did updates using Periscope. This is the first time I actually did a Periscope for Country Squire Radio. So right. now, now Country Squire Radio actually does have its own Periscope account. So Ow. that's kind of cool. Uh, and it's just, as, as far as I know, it's just our Twitter handle, which is at Squire Radio. It should be the same for Periscope. And so I Periscoped my entire 20 minutes and 13 seconds. Like from the moment that I lit my pipe, I set the Periscope up and was talking to the people. Right. And we actually, we had, I mean, you know, it was like 30 people that tuned in to watch, which yeah. is kind of cool. It was funny to me. I, my parents actually, after the, Your after the long Your mom was hearting us like crazy. I, that, no, my mom hearts me all the time. Oh, uh, dude. <laughs> I hurt your mom. She is awesome. <laughs> Everyone hurts my mom. Uh, but 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 yeah, that they were. My mom called me and she was like, "Yeah, your dad and I, you know, we 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 watched you. We got to see you." Right. And I was like, "Oh, you did." <laughs> 
but I, I I didn't realize before the thing that you were going to do the periscope. And so uh, once I kind of caught on what was happening, I was like, oh, OK, well, I'm glad I powdered my nose today. That worked out good. <laughs> you know, we got we've got wonderful sponsors for this show, of course, with the country squire, with Lane Limited, with Audible. Um, but your mom really, I don't yeah, know. She, she's she's kind of, secretly she's like the she's, banner sponsor. She is shipping all kinds of money just so she can see her little boy. <laughs> oh, that's my baby boy. That's my special boy. <laughs> Even though he kind of looks like a beatnik. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, man. But anyway, so uh, if you happen to be on the Periscope, uh, check it out. I don't really fully understand the full value of Periscope, but we are now on there, so <laughs> check it out. What a ringing endorsement. Well, I mean, what, well, what you are you don't like do? Instagram either. But well, I, I don't. I don't like Instagram. That's true. I use Instagram all the time. It makes sense for what you do. It doesn't make sense for somebody who's dealing with audio to be on Instagram because you can't really get people to do anything beyond just look at pictures. And you don't want people to see you. I mean, they could see me. What's up? On the uh, the live show, but <laughs> beyond that, not really. Yeah, whatever. Well, uh, I will say this. So we are on Periscope, so check that out. Here's another kind of cool thing. Um, tonight is a very monumental night. Yeah. Uh, if you are tuning in live, we really appreciate you doing so. You are, of course, tuning in live at CountrySquireRadio.com. And I say that specifically because tonight we are actually launching uh, the a, a independent, not independent, a dedicated YouTube channel to Country Squire Radio. Uh, da, so, da, da, da. <laughs> in the past, as you've been tuning in live for Country Squire Radio, you've been tuning in live through the Pottery channel. And if you are currently subscribed to the Pottery YouTube channel, thank you for doing that. I encourage you to stick around for excellent content coming that way. But we want you to encourage you to actually uh, subscribe to the Country Squire Radio YouTube channel. What you need to do, if you're listening live, is just click on the YouTube icon that's in that corner there i hope that's the wrong corner <laughs> for a variety of reasons <laughs> or there <laughs> just to cover all of our bases um but hey click on that youtube channel if you're on our, our home page and that'll take you to our youtube uh channel and uh just subscribe go ahead and subscribe right now if you are tuning in if you're listening on the podcast right now we still actually want you to check out our youtube channel so do this go to countrysquireradio.com click on the link that says youtube and subscribe to the channel now, here's the added benefit. Mm. We are actually giving away not one, but two pounds of tobacco. Ounces. Two ounces of tobacco. <laughs> Let me do that again for the, uh, I'll edit around that. Here's $150 worth of tobacco. <laughs> so pounds, ounces? Ounces. ounces. All right, here we go. We're at, right. <laughs> we're actually giving away two ounces of tobacco. Ow! From the Country Squire. These are blends made specifically by this guy right here. Right. Mr. You, Country, can you can only get them here at our shop. Mr. Country Squire Radio himself. That's right. John David Cole. Anything you've heard us talking about, you can get two ounces of. So all you have to do is subscribe to our channel and then also head over to at Squire Radio on Twitter and tweet us letting us know that you have subscribed. And that is how you'll be able to validate that. So do that right now. Head over to CountrySquireRadio.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're listening live, go ahead and click the YouTube icon in the corner of the screen and subscribe that way, and you will be in that running. We'll have this going on probably for the remainder of the month. Okay. And okay. I think we'll announce the winner in December. And, and and by the way, if it's you know it's two ounces of anything we've got here on the shelf, and so any of our private blends that we hand blend our our private recipes here in the shop. Uh, if it's something that you know you want one ounce of a couple different things, you can do that as well. So, yeah. uh, but anyway, we're really excited, and I uh, hope a lot of y'all subscribe and tweet and etc now when i say that you know with, with this contest this is really just kind of to help out that that unique channel we're still primarily a podcast so yeah, don't absolutely. think that we're all of a sudden like a youtube channel or anything like that that's not the case yeah trust me it's a lot better to hear us than see us <laughs> <laughs> well it, it's one of these things it's kind of interesting i've, I've you know I'm, I'm in this podcasting space and in this world and, and kind of paying attention to what's going on there and, and typically what has happened to us is the same that I've seen with a lot of podcasters who have put their content on YouTube. Yeah. It's it's like less than 1% of our listeners base that actually checks out the podcast. And so it's not our primary channel at all. But at the same time, it is- it checks out the YouTube channel. Exactly. Right. right. But it is kind of an additional way to engage with the show. And we might have unique content coming that way. We've done kind of tips and tricks in the past before. Yeah. We may do that again with this new channel. So uh, check that out. CountrySquireRadio.com. Click the YouTube button and you can subscribe today. Do we have any other news or anything else we need to cover before we get to get started? Uh, no, I don't think we do. Okay. This is the other thing. So if y'all are tuning in live, y'all grant us a little bit of grace. 
Um, we've mentioned this before as we have uh, broadcasted from the store, but I'm out of my element not having my studio. <laughs> so that's kind of part of the old. I don't know. As you continue uh, down the bottom of that cup you've got there, you might get more in your element. Let's hope so. <laughs> All right. Man, we've got a great topic tonight. Yeah, I'm excited, man. We mentioned this for the last couple of episodes, but we're reopening our series on pipe culture. That's right. Now, for those of you who have never heard an episode about pipe culture, this is where we take a look at um, kind of the culture that surrounds the pipe. Uh, we look at kind of shared experiences as it relates to pipe smokers. And this is not a method and a means of which we're saying that all pipe smokers must conform to a certain image or a certain way of doing things, but it's kind of almost a study of those shared experiences as we kind of define pipe culture based off of you guys and what your experiences are. Yeah, this is certainly like, you know, crowd, uh, you know, oriented and, and, and listener oriented and, and, you know, with feedback from us too. But um, yeah, I mean, we're just trying to look for common threads. I think that's one thing we go back to often. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So we talked in our earliest episode. In fact, volume one of pipe culture was about defining what the tenets, what the, the pillars, if you will, of pipe culture are. And those go back to, um, uh, thoughtfulness, craftsmanship, I'm trying to remember. The, yeah. <laughs> I was about to say reflection, but I know that's not correct. Thoughtfulness, crafts, craftsmanship. Uh, tonight we're talking about relaxation. That's relaxation. There's a third one though, or the missing one. Recreation. Recreation. Thank you. Recreation. And then tonight we're talking about relaxation. Does that relax you? It does a little bit. <laughs> I, you know, it's funny. I actually, I saved this one for last because I almost yeah. feel like it's, it's almost too easy. Yeah. You know, the first thing you think of when smoking your pipe is really about relaxing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I agree. Um, you know, and it, and it's funny, I'm not relaxing well tonight because my pipe is not staying lit <laughs> for some reason. It really bothers me. Oh, but, uh, yeah, you know, when most people think of smoking a pipe, they think of someone sitting there gently, maybe reading or having a cup of their favorite beverage or something and, and smoking their pipe. So, so first and foremost, I think in a lot of folks' mind, is that sense of relaxation. They think of granddad maybe sitting there and, um, you know, enjoying the, uh, you know, enjoying the football game or sitting on the porch just kind of quietly, um, you know, and, and nowadays, you know, a young person, you know, kind of trying to escape from the uh, craziness of, you know, a school schedule or, a, you know, hectic work schedule, uh, just getting out maybe after work on the porch and, and enjoying themselves. So, you know, we, we do occasionally go to the other parts of, of the, the pillars of the culture, you know, but um, for me, the relaxation is kind of kind of why I got involved with the pipe in the first place. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, you think about actually those other things too. I think it's specifically about thoughtfulness and, uh, and craftsmanship. And, yeah. You know, for me, I know that relaxation kind of pairs up with those two. Yeah, and there's actually there's a lot of cross pollination. Yeah, they're intertwined these. certainly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And, and we've had we've had listeners kind of comment on that as Absolutely. you know there there's uh you know and it, maybe even I don't know is it too much to say a little frustration and kind of the way we've parsed it here and there. I mean you know we're just trying to take kind of broad brush strokes though and Absolutely. say you know these are these are some of the common threads that that we see. Yeah, and the great thing is that you've seen them as well, and so we pitched out kind of you know this idea of. Uh, you know, gathering your stories and your experiences as it relates to relaxation. And uh, once we, once again, before we even start reading this, I mean, we have to give a huge thanks to the Reddit community at our pipe tobacco on Reddit, because you guys are awesome. Uh, you're, you're always just a constant source of content for us. And, and we just really want to support those guys. So if you're not on that Reddit community, you absolutely should be. Yeah. Just, just as a quick aside, Bo, yeah. uh, what a member of the Reddit community called me today and was, mm. you know, just kind of saying, look, uh, our, our folks, you know, just so much about the country squire. We kind of, you know, pull for y'all and uh, you have a lot of fans. And I we, we really do thank the Reddit community for just being uh, so encouraging to us. Absolutely, yeah. man. Uh, all right. So this is great. I kind of pitched out the question. Yeah. Because I was, I was thinking about relaxation. And so this is kind of how I'd like to frame a little bit of our conversation as we kind of go through these comments. And yeah. that is, is the pipe, is, is, is your pipe, the source of your relaxation or is it an enhancement to your relaxation? Hmm. Hmm. Why don't you go ahead and read the first one that we've got there? Yeah, I think, uh, I think that's great. This comes from uncle Jack deserve it. Uh, hold on one moment. One of the, uh, the We're sides, closed, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> one of the sides of actually doing this live is that do you need to go take care of business? So we're actually in the shop right now. And, uh, if you've ever been to the country squire radio or country squire, you know, that, there's actually uh, windows that people can actually see into the shop, which is cool. 
uh, but they can also see in as we're doing this live. So that's part of it as well. Kind of crazy, but hey, that's all right. That's how we do it here. And that is part of the process. One of the beautiful things about tuning in live is you get to see how the sausage is made. And uh, sometimes that ain't pretty. And when all you have to do is look at me, then you know that ain't pretty. <laughs> there that goes. Um, but hey, I will take this time just to tell you about a couple of things. For one thing, if you've not done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel that you're watching right now. Um, that's a good thing. That's actually uh, one of our, our live studio audience members is just throwing something out. That's the Pottery channel. Subscribe to that too. But uh, that's not actually the, the Country Squire Radio new channel. Uh, you all right? That was funny. Was it? I mean, it was the maintenance guy for the the quarter shopping center. Oh, it was a super. Which it, yeah, I mean, kind of, yeah, yeah. It's a super. That, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a super. I mean, um, this place is kind of a dump. <laughs> no, no. Look, man. No. Is that just terrible for me to say? Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. Like it's it, it's uh it's it's it. People pay good money for that charm. Exactly. It's charming. That's right. the it's, word. It's, I was, it's I was, quite, it's it's quite charming. charming. There's yeah. something romantic about a disheveled little, <laughs> you know, shopping center that tries to, you know, very cliche way mimic the French Quarter. And that's where we're at. You all right? I'm okay. I, I'm a, I might be a little bitter. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, the, the, that was our friendly super. We're, we're, we're glad he stopped by to interrupt our show. All, all right, right. Go ahead. We're back. Back up and running. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, yeah, I, I think first we had, uh, yeah, this first one comes from Uncle Jack Deserved It. Uh, he said, it's something to lean back with, something to regulate your breathing, and something to add ritual to your hectic daily life. Uh, I'd say it plays a large large part in my relaxation. Kind of mm -hmm. like what we talked about, that uh, you know, interruption in the ridiculous, uh, you know, hec hectic, you know, day that we experience now. Absolutely. Uh, the good kind of interruption. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Dak... Or D A K K E H. I'm assuming the E H is is a silent. I'd say we'd go with decay. Decay, Deca. Sounds like a Star Trek thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, he says, "I wouldn't say it's the source, but it's definitely a key player in my ritual." Yeah, uh, if you will. Me relaxing usually involves getting everything nice and organized, making some type of cocktail at my bar, and getting comfy in my study throwing a record on the player and lighting either a pipe or a cigar. You know, that imagery of sitting in your study in that easy chair, you yeah. know, with your, uh, you know, your, your smoking jacket on and everything. Yeah. That, there's a classic image that I think a lot of people came to the pipe wanting to achieve that, that feeling they get when they see that imagery or when that imagery is kind of conjured up. The imagery I really want you to see right now, though, yeah. is me sitting on my porch in my bathrobe. Uh, I, I'm smoking good. my pipe. I'm good. And and you, and you get to live with that tonight because that's what happened <laughs> this morning and it was so relaxed. <laughs> I've run by your house before. I've, I've seen that, unfortunately. <laughs> Next one comes from Pipezilla. He says, uh, it's an enhancement. Uh, it could be pulling weeds and relaxing, but if I, if I and a pipe, we'll see. It could be pulling weeds and relaxing, but if I had a pipe to it, if I add a pipe to it, it sets me into a dimension of relaxing. Uh, when I'm smoking, I tend to not think about my personal life and the hardships. I like to think about happy times or stare into the clouds or just stare at the trees. Yeah, I, I've experienced that some too. Uh, there's almost like a trance-like state that, that comes with it. It's really mm. nice. I, I recently got to go to the beach for the last time this uh, during the hot weather and uh, sitting out by the waves, which the waves were kind of rhythmically crashing, and there's almost this trance-like thing thing to it and i think the pipe uh leads you in that direction as well that's good man uh kind of kind of poor theologian i love that kind of poor theologian writes in saying uh, definitely an enhancement to my relaxation i try to only smoke when i am already relaxing and often using smoking as a type of slow me down and take time to read Pipe smoking is also a great time of contemplation for me often going somewhere that i enjoy a favorite restaurant or out by the lake to read think and enjoy a nice long bowl and that that kind of plays at what we've talked about before with yeah. the idea of kind of crossing over right the relaxing along with the thoughtfulness yeah um is, is really you know just very very good i mean i i think about for me i wish that i could get out and enjoy my pipe more than i'm actually able to but yeah. my life has just been so hectic lately um the other night we had a storm coming in 
And it was just a beautiful rolling storm. And yeah. I was so, it was a perfect moment because my daughters were asleep and I could actually go out with the dog on the porch right before that magic hour when the cool breeze oh, it's comes cool in. And you can smell the rain like rolling in. Exactly. And I was able to sit there with my pipe and be like, oh, this is that pure moment of relaxation. I think that for me, that's what I try to achieve is kind of, you know, looking for that perfect moment, that perfect space yeah. and getting into that relaxing mode. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, next comes from our friend Pylorns, a uh, good, good friend of the Love show Pylorns. and, uh, and of the country squire. He says, uh, would I call it a source of relaxation? No. He says, I'd say it's an enhancement. I do find myself looking for opportunities to sit and smoke a pipe. Uh, I find I'm more laid back and conversational with the pipe in my mouth. I find that it helps me focus on multiple tasks, prioritizing them for my daily work routine. Uh, yeah, I mean, that makes sense. And I think knowing uh, Pylorn's, uh, you know, kind of his, um, you know, personality, that that does tend to make a lot of sense. You know, it, it's an enhancement for kind of what he's already doing, which, uh, you know, which I gather. And this really brings it home, I think, overall, is that uh, Gant Duff, he, he mentions it can be either or and sometimes both, depending on the situation. Uh, oftentimes, though I reach for my, a pipe when I'm busy, I'm looking to further enjoy my downtime with a nice smoke. Yeah. And so I think that, yes, either or, but also both, really kind of speaks to where, where the pipe plays into uh, relaxation overall. Now, I mean, we've heard a lot of different experiences in one way or the other, but I, I think that there is kind of a core there that – you know, maybe I'm not necessarily coming to the pipe for relaxation, or yeah. sometimes maybe I am. Yeah, uh, and it, it just plays a, a pivotal role. You know what's interesting, and, and you you had mentioned uh, uh, some of your thoughts on kind of you know that experience of the you know the rain kind of rolling in. Oh, this man, this yeah. is this is the relaxive thing that that you know it kind of epitomizes what it's like to relax and smoke a pipe. But yeah. I you know for me in the past the the pipe uh, kind of like our friend Pylorn said it, it's been a it's it's been an enhancement kind of a you know a, a add-on to a relaxing season for me uh of late it's kind of shifted a little bit and, and i you know from my own experience sitting down for me the pipe becomes the source of relaxing and mm. and, it, and it's fascinating uh I, i've i've noticed recently you know it's funny i, I as a tobacconist you know you're behind the counter I, i'm literally smoking different kinds of blends all the time and uh, you know, experimenting with stuff and just trying new things that other folks have made. And, um, and, and, and for some reason of late, my palate has been really, really sensitive to, uh, certain tobaccos. And, and, and when I smoke and taste these specific leaves, um, it's just kind of, it's one of those things where like when you taste a really good piece of your favorite, like chocolate cake or something. Oh yeah. And it's like when that first part hits the, just the right part of your tongue and you close your eyes and kind of go <laughs> <laughs> like that, that's been happening a lot for me lately. It's really yeah. interesting. And so the, uh, the, you know, the, the rhythmic part of the pipe, uh, you know, adding to, you know, a relaxing experience has, has been there, I guess, but Man, it, it's like I crave smoking my pipe because I want to taste that. Mm. Yeah, and it and it's just been it's been such a blessing to me. I don't know. I think in some sense the the pipe has been the source of relaxation for me a lot more of late. Yeah. Well, Rush actually is uh, tuning in live. He actually tweeted in a picture of his spot that he relaxes when he goes to his pipe. Yeah. And uh, we just retweeted that out on our official account too. So be sure to check that out. Like that uh, smoking table he's got there. Oh yeah. I it mean, looks like a bottle of a uh, maybe. Oh no, that's a looks like some kind of beer or something. Maybe I would a imagine wine. so. Yeah. Yeah. Delicious. And and several pipes. He's got his. Uh, he's got he's got an entire uh, selection right there. Oh yeah. To go to. Well, good stuff, man. What about you, Ben? I mean, overall, you you get the opportunity to see a lot of people come into the shop, uh, coming to the pipe for the first time or otherwise. I mean, how often would you say that relaxation is kind of a primary means through which people are actually coming to the shop? Yeah, I I think I think the pipe and the relaxive kind of properties of it uh, account for about eighty percent of our customers mm, coming in. Mm -hmm, yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's extremely significant, and you know, may, may, maybe seventy percent, but you know, it, it, it's very, very much a majority. And, you know, I, I hear every day all the time as folks come in and purchase their tobacco, they, they're, they're giddy. Typically it's in the afternoon or, you know, after work, they're kind of on their way home and, and you can see the twinkle in their eyes as they anticipate going home, sitting on, you know, typically a porch or patio or something and, and, and being 
treated by this luxury that they've offered themselves, you know. Uh, and so and, and it's almost always that way. A lot of times uh, young fathers, you know, come in, uh, maybe people in their mid 30s or something, got a couple of kids running around the house. Uh, Bo lifts his cup here. Uh, you know, it, it, th- there's that moment in which they say, you know, I, I put the kids down. They, they get in the bed. Uh, my wife is gracious enough to give me a few moments, uh, <laughs> you know, at, 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 with by myself, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and, and then they get to savor that pipe. And mm-hmm. and it's uh, I, I don't know. I think for most people that come in the country squire, it's a respite. It is a real, real respite. Savoring is such a good word to describe it, too, because you think of so much that you kind of go to. Uh, when you enjoy life and it's so easy to like mass consume, you know, you mentioned yeah. cake earlier. Yeah. You get a chocolate cake right in front I of you. I love to mass consume cake. You just pound that cake, right? <laughs> now you gotta, you, I mean like, but there, there's something about the pipe that it's impossible. Yeah. You know, like it's not something you can just go to and smoke just really, really quick. And even right. if you are actually smoking it quick, it's still going to take you 20 minutes to get to the end of the bowl. Yeah. And then you regret it because your tongue feels like a piece of leather. <laughs> right. Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. But it, it, it is it for, again, your pipe, it, that's the beauty of it. We talk about this all the time. I know we sound like broken records, but your pipe forces you to slow down. And yeah. so that whole concept of slowing your heart rate, slowing your, your rhythm and, um, you know, kind of coming, becoming one with the, you know, sense of cadence that, it takes to keep your pipe lit and to get it lit and all these things. Um, man, I mean, that, that makes me, that makes my eyes twinkle. My the, po- the pipe connects you with the tree and the rock and the ship. Was that Yoda? That was, try- that was an attempt at Yoda. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Stick to your day job. I will. Um, <laughs> of course, my day job is this. So right. you- <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, but man, so there you go. Pipe culture. Uh, I mean, this has been a fun series for for us. Well, I think, you know, in a lot of ways, we've just, you know, gotten to see other people's takes on number one, why they got into pipe smoking, but also how it's evolved for them. And um, I don't know, I really appreciate that. I've appreciated seeing kind of uh, what makes people so passionate about it. And you know, all the time, it's just dovetails with some very important part of their life, whether it be craftsmanship or you know, uh, thoughtfulness, work. Uh, et cetera, et cetera, recreation yeah. or, uh, or relaxing. And, um, you know, I, I think in many cases, as we discussed, it's all, it's all kind of intertwined. Absolutely. Well, here's the great thing. This, this series will actually continue. We've, we've kind of covered the, the basis. We've covered the origins. We've covered the pillars, but there are elements that we want to dive into. You know, we've talked before in the past about kind of wanting to look at, you know, the quote unquote hipster movement yeah. and how that plays in the pipe culture. And, uh, and there's a lot of elements there that we kind of want to address and, and jump into. And so, uh, you know, be, be on the lookout and be, you know, uh, keeping up with us so that we can gather your feedback. Because as we move forward with the Pipe Culture Series, it's not about us. It really is about the community. Um, I think probably out of everything that we do, we try to, to input a lot of the community into each episode. But Pipe Culture in particular is very much community driven in terms of the subject matter and in terms of kind of the different opinions that are uh, that are featured. So um, we really appreciate you guys for kind of helping us create this series. And then we look forward to, to your continued input as we move forward. So Absolutely. look yeah. for, for topics in the future. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of topics and the future, we are like less than a month away from the new Star Wars movie. Dude. And I, I believe you've already gotten your ticket. Dude, you? I have. Yeah, yeah. We we're just talking about that. You know, uh, I, I I don't watch movies. This is something that Bo chastises me for regularly. Oh, and, I, you know, I have family members, too, and friends that are, you know, they'll constantly try to make movie references. And I'm just like, oh, that came from Top Gun. And that means what to me? Can like, I, I tell <laughs> you, I've considered doing, I, I occasionally read these blog posts where somebody did a social experiment yeah. of trying to do X, Y, or Z yeah. for like 24 hours. I have considered doing a social experiment for like where 24 hours solid, I try to work a Star Wars quote into every single conversation. Because A, I think it's possible. And B, I probably do it anyway. They have therapy groups for this kind of thing, you know, and we, we can find those. No, things. no. I don't, <laughs> you don't want to be healed. They need, they you don't want to be healed of that. They need therapy groups for those that don't that do don't that. Know. <laughs> exactly. I, I, I saw a meme the other day and it was like, you know, uh, it had some goofy picture of some cat that looked like it was smiling or something. Of course it did. And it, of course, obviously, <laughs> it's a meme on the internet in 2015. And 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 the the tagline on it said, you know, that feeling you get when you don't have to explain your Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so true. You know, it's like yeah, but I, you know, I as as y'all know, I don't watch movies. I it's just a number of reasons. I've never, I don't, I don't know, I don't even know why I don't watch movies, but it's just not big. But 
but the but the Star Wars universe for me has always captivated me. Mm. There, I am a sucker for science fiction. I, I like and you know read sci-fi all the time and just science all the time anyway. And uh, you know, and, and Star Wars is wonderful because it, it interweaves the sci-fi with this great romantic narrative about good and evil and you know uh, relationship and you know overcoming you know uh, uh, the worst odds and all this kind of stuff. And yeah. so. Uh, man, e- even as the movie has gotten closer, I even have been so excited to see it come up. So, um, yeah, I'm fired up, dude. Man, it's it's going to be great. And the great thing is you can get geared up and hyped up for the upcoming Star Wars movie by listening to some great audiobooks. You can. It's actually a great way to relax as well. While you're smoking your pipe, you're able to listen to audiobooks. <clears throat> Head over to audibletrial.com slash CSR, and you can get yourself a free audiobook. We've talked about them I mean, gosh, for over 100 episodes now. Yeah, absolutely. So why haven't you done it? This is the time. AudibleTrial.com slash CSR. Get yourself a free audio book, and hey, it helps the show. All right, man. Pipe question of the week is brought to us, of course, by our good friends at Lane Limited. Yes. Dude. Uh, tonight we are featuring Lane 1Q once One Q. again, and we are uh, very happy to be doing that. Uh, a lot of folks don't know this is kind of fun. Uh, <laughs> I, we have this tin right here of Lane 1Q yeah, uh, in my hand, and a lot of folks are like, that comes in a tin? <laughs> and it's such a beautiful tin. It's a very, very lovely tin. It's got just a real nice kind of gold foil on top of it. And, There's a uh, classic element to Lane 1. It's very, very classic. Everything Lane does, everything they've ever put out has, uh, is, is always uh, really beautiful. And, of course, our shop has been a Lane shop for quite some time. And uh, Anyway, we're glad to feature Lane 1Q tonight and uh, thank them for sponsoring the Pipe Question of the Week. Absolutely. Try it out. Hey, and if, if you've been smoking Lane 1Q, let us know what you think. We'd love to read some of your thoughts on the uh, the blend yourself here on the show. All right. Pipe Question of the Week. The, I love this because this actually speaks to something that you referenced earlier Yeah. this episode as I pull up the show notes. Oh, look at that. Yeah, yeah no, it does. <clears throat> Pipe question of the week actually comes in from Nelson Griffin, who writes, what are the best practices for smoking your pipe at the beach? Yeah, it, that is funny. As soon as I read this, I thought of all of those images of you smoking your pipe on the beach and just like hanging out. You you, you mentioned this earlier this episode, but you took a sabbatical for a weekend. I did. Can I, take, can I use that term, sabbatical? Yeah, I, I reckon. All right, so you, you were off. I'm, I'm a little curious about who was taking the photos because there's like these photos of you down the beach <laughs> i was like i thought he was alone during this time <laughs> you did, know, did penny take the photos yeah i was just saying right of course i brought my britney spaniel with me you know, and that, <laughs> that's how that worked uh yeah so anyway smoking your pipe on the beach bo uh <laughs> it uh I, I i happened to meet a friend down there okay <laughs> and 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 uh that friend uh snapped a few candles okay all right uh, but anyway uh yeah Pipe smoking on the beach is this funny thing. You're like, beach, super relaxing. Pipe, super relaxing. Lighting your pipe on the beach, like, from the depths of hell. <laughs> 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 like, try, I don't know. I have never had success. Uh, Two lighting. great tastes that do not work together. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's like, I don't know, kind of, you know, mixing Latakia, for instance, with, I don't know, maybe our house blend blue ribbon that's just eaten ooh, up with, oh, uh, oh, you know, berry fly. I don't know. I mean, t- two good things and you mix them together and you're mm. like, that tastes like sin. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. The the smoking on the beach, you, you think is is relaxing. Some people can really pull it off. Uh and, and and do it regularly. I have never succeeded in regularly being able to light my pipe on a beach and and enjoy it. Uh, now I took my pipe to the beach. It's one of those things you know you're able to sneak a few puffs in. But typically, whenever uh, and 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 take my pipe with me, I'm always enjoying it. Uh, maybe if I'm out listening to some live music or on you know back at the hotel room or right. you know on a it, on a patio somewhere that's kind of away from. All the wind. The wind is the main problem. Exactly. It's, it's the wind, yep. you know. And, and and even this is the deal too. Even if you get your pipe lit, uh, you, you have the you know the wind is bad. They're, they make a wind cap for a reason. You know, wind is bad for right. for your pipe. I mean, there have been people that have let their uh you know pipe kind of you know if you can imagine rolling your window down while you're driving. Uh, in your car and kind of your elbows sitting out the the side of the car, you know, enjoying the breeze and all that. And there have been people that have kind of left their pipe hanging out too close to the window. Mm. And and the wind, because it's so strong, it stokes that fire up so, so hot. It's actually like 
burned their pipe out, right? right. Like burned a hole right to the side of their pipe. So, so that I and don't it's know. funny because actually, if you're if you're a new smoker, yeah. you might have experienced this where the wind kind of like comes in and like lights up your pipe, and you're thinking like, oh, this is great. This is like cheating, right? You're like, this is this. I'm doing really well. And then you realize as your hand starts like catching on Boiling, fire, right? Yeah, <laughs> this is actually not a good thing at all. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that. That's just my personal experience. I do have friends that uh, do enjoy lighting their pipe on the beach, um, and I, I don't know how they do it. Do they use like a blowtorch? Well, I wanted to ask you. You mentioned the cap, right? Because you see these pipes would actually have the um, the 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 covering. Yeah, the 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 cover, the wind cap, and of course it's got some holes on the side of it, so you can. Uh, you know, continue to smoke your pipe through that. The wind cap is nice because it's designed to you know, <laughs> protect your pipe from the wind and, oh, you know, or, or, or the elements, period. But, you know, it, it is. It's offering you that ability to continue to smoke your pipe uh, even though, you know, the conditions aren't favorable for it. So I, I don't know. I, I, I would try that. Uh, don't take any matches to the beach. That no. just sounds like a fool's errand. I mean, you, um, it'd be blown out before it even touched the tobacco. Yeah. A Zippo, uh, pipe lighter would probably be your best bet to be honest with you. Yeah. I, you know, I'd tell you to use a, um, a torch lighter, but that is not what you're supposed to do with the pipe. So, uh, maybe use that on your least favorite pipe. Well, maybe just bring your least favorite pipe to the beach or maybe wait till you're off the beach and go out that night and you're eating some seafood at a really cool restaurant that has a patio and then you smoke your pipe. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pitch this one out. We've got some uh, we've got some listeners out in the LA Pipe Club. Yeah. Y'all let us know. Y'all are out on the coast. We want to hear what you do. Or, or anywhere close to the beach. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I did, Florida Panhandle. Are you guys listening? Y'all let us know. <laughs> We'd love to know we what you do. we got some listeners down on the Redneck Riviera. <laughs> I'm sure we do. So uh, y'all help They're us out. They're not listeners anymore. But. No. No, we just offended them <laughs> greatly. But uh, no, seriously, this will be one that we'll post up on the Facebook page. So we'd love to hear some of your thoughts yeah, and what yeah. you've been able to do with this. You know, I think about that cap all the time. Um, you know, we, we generally just are not in a place uh, where it's a necessary feature or a necessary accessory. You know why I use that cap? Why? I The only time I use that wind cap is when I'm smoking my pipe in my car. And oh. I don't want the ashes to fall out of my bowl if I need to, like, set my pipe in the console or something. Oh, yeah, okay. And so, like, I... I but that's, that's not even the way... Is that... That's not how it's intended to be used. No. I, I mean, I don't... No. Yeah. I mean, it just... It's one of those things, like, it... I don't know. It just seems to... It just seems to help. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Well, one way or the other, we want to hear your thoughts. So, uh, head over to Country Squire Radio's Facebook page. And, of course, you can find the links at countrysquireradio.com. All right. Quick fire questions. Now, last week, as you may recall, we did quick fire questions that were sent in by H. Mitchell. Yeah. Uh, he, he actually sent in a bunch of them. They all go under the theme of professions. Okay. And so we're continuing that theme on this episode. This is fun. It kind of lets you, uh, I don't know, in some sense, be like, if I lived in an alternate universe where I made different I decisions, what could life look like? <laughs> what, what is, the, uh, what is the, the best possible universe or worst possible universe? Who knows? Yeah. All right. Ready? Yeah. Bring it. Graphic designer or painter? Ooh, I know. Uh, yeah, that that's a tough one. I, mm, I would be I would be very poor at both. Yeah, well, yeah, uh, obviously. I, I think if I had to excel at one, I I, I think if I chose one, this seems kind of contrary to my nature, perhaps. But I'd probably go a graphic designer. Ooh, okay. See, this is my challenge right here because I find myself like constantly, almost on a daily basis, yeah, wishing that I was a graphic designer. Right. But only because you need one. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Not because you want to be one, yeah. just because you need one. Like if I could choose on what to do, <laughs> like in, in the future when I eventually have spare time at some point in my life, like I would want to be a painter. I wouldn't <laughs> want to be a graphic designer. Okay. But in the here and now, I wish I was a graphic designer. So I guess from a profession standpoint, yeah, yeah I'm going to go with graphic de designer as well. Okay. All right. Pilot or boat captain? I, uh, if we're talking about pilot, are we talking about an airplane pilot? I would imagine. I, yeah. I'm assuming. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd probably go with a pilot. Really? Yeah, I'd probably go with a pilot. Boat captain, man. I know. Man, I'm just all over the mark, off the mark tonight. You'd think like boat captain is like a pipe smoker, right? Dude, you can but, like fish. Why, like, what, what are you going to do when you're in like the pilot seat? Okay, okay, okay. So last you night. You can drink while you're a boat captain. <laughs> last night, you can do that. Uh, you know, last night I was uh, looking, you know, and you know how you get in Wikipedia and you just oh, start, yeah. you just start clicking and maybe you get on there to, you know, check some reference from some Preach. song that you like. And then, you know, five minutes later, literally you're 
you know, you, you've you've started reading about, you know, puppy dogs. Oh, or absolutely. Something. That's just Wikipedia. I've, just, been, I've thought about doing a podcast based on the trail that you go off of. Wikipedia. It's a it's a Wikipedia <laughs> yeah. trail. That would yeah. be a good a good study. Maybe so. Uh, but last night somehow I started uh, reading about the. Uh, <laughs> SR seventy one Blackbird. Of course you did. Uh, which of course was the uh, you know spy plane developed by the United States uh, government and our friends at Lockheed Martin during uh, during the the Cold War. Uh, oh, really? Back oh, in the sixties, okay. and wow. uh, you know it, there were there were pictures of these pilots that uh, you know basically you looked below them and you saw blue, and you looked above them and you saw space because those people were up there so far. Oh wow! Yeah. And that, that's amazing to me. Like like. They fly at the edge of space, and that I don't know. It just kind of blew my mind. That is cool. Yeah, yeah. But I, I I've you can go with the boat captain. captain. That's fine. Yeah, it's just I, there's just something cool about the idea that you're just out there. You can catch your dinner right, right. Ah, there. you old salt. Maybe I don't know. I got a canoe. I don't have a plan. What's the next one? <laughs> All right, this is good. Brewer or distiller? Distiller. I, I, I enjoy drinking liquor more than I enjoy drinking beer. As do I. Yeah. But and, and, and with me, liquor is just so much more varied. I for me, I'd have to go with distiller. I'm leaning towards distiller as well because I have brewed beer. Yeah. Which is fun and it's a cool thing. But I remember like, okay, so my wife is uh is a chemist. Right. And she, when I was in getting into brewing beer, she was really like, Oh, we should actually distill, because that was a little bit more of our chemistry. Yeah. Except um, that's illegal in like 48 states. Which is why we <laughs> didn't do it. And she said specifically, we didn't do it because it was illegal. Right. Anyway. Um, but uh, We didn't do it, wink, wink. You know... The still is in the basement. I'm going to go with Brewer. Okay. I, I, think, I think that's a cool cool profession. Oh, that's cool. Do you know uh, who the patron saint of Brewers is? Saint Patrick? Saint <laughs> that would make sense. That would uh, make sense. It's actually Saint... Augustine, the, Is that right? uh, yeah, like the Saint Aug or Saint Augustine, like the like the founder of you know one of the pillars of the early church. Like he's the patron saint of brewers, and I don't know why. Well, I mean, it makes sense if you go to most monasteries, like legit monasteries, they're yeah. brewing beer down there. Yeah, I remember actually when I was in Italy, when I was in Florence, there was this monastery on the side of the hill that's like overlooks Florence. Yeah, they've got the uh, they grow like grapes and olives and stuff on the side of the, and there's all these little monks that are kind of always working the fields and yeah. have fires going at night and everything. And down below, they actually have a brewery which you can tour. And like my biggest regret from our trip to Italy is it's that we not, did not tour not that going brewery. Through that. Man, I, I, I'm going back at some point. That is on my bucket a month. list. Yeah, man, I still have time, dude. In another life. Yeah. <laughs> 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 if life had gone differently, I would totally be a, lo a monk out in Florence. All right, and finally, and this is great, tobacconist or pipe maker? Uh, uh, tobacconist. I mean, you have to. I right? love what I do. I, 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 I love pipes. Obviously, it's the it's the you know tool in which I use to enjoy my tobacco, and uh, obviously, you know, collecting pipes is is such a such a wonderful hobby. But uh, oh, absolutely. You know, I, I was joking with someone about this the other day. Like, I, I love pipes but I'm a tobacco guy. Oh, yeah, you know, you get into pipe smoking for different reasons and you stay in it for different reasons. And uh, a lot of folks, you know, love just the grain and the, you know, uh, nature of the different pipes, having a variety of shapes and all this stuff. Me, man, I would so much rather have three pipes that I know backwards and forwards and have just an unlimited supply of, you know, tobacco from all over the world. I love it. I'm a tobacconist. All right, so for me, I, I actually... Uh, Tobacco versus pipe. I'm actually more of a pipe guy. Yeah. But when it comes to profession, I would choose tobacconist. And here's yeah. the reason why. Uh, John David, when you look at my hand, how many fingers do you see? Uh, close to 10. Yeah, I, I want to keep it that way. Okay, that's, that, <laughs> that's why I have no <laughs> desire to ever do any woodworking whatsoever. Well, well, well played. I mean, most of the people you look at, if they're over the age of 60 and they're woodworkers, they're missing a couple of fingers. I, I mean, you know, it depends on, you know, what they've been doing. I would be one of those guys that would lose a couple of fingers. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> Excellent pipe questions. All right, excellent quick fire questions sent in by H. Mitchell. We really appreciate it. And then, hey, if you've got quick fire questions, send them in. CSR at potistery.com. Bo, I have just quit trying to keep my pipe lit tonight. I I, I, I kind of actually, when you were talking about I having this, feel like a failure tonight. I don't know. Like we're sitting here at the squire surrounded by all this, you know, wonderful smelling tobacco. And like I'm, I'm smoking this, uh, this flake tobacco. I won't tell you what it is, but, uh, you know, and I, I, I can't keep it lit. You know, I'm actually, we've had so that many hiccups during the live show. I'm tempted to not even put this out as our first episode. Why? This is a lot of fun. You, you think so? What do y'all think? We should, should we keep this out? 
Y'all decide. Y'all let me know on Twitter. Come on. And should this be the first episode of great. the Country Squire Rate? Because we can't edit this. I can't make I, the podcast will be like pristine. No, course. it's gonna be great. But I mean, like you know, the YouTube. It's like this is it. This is what you see is what you get. I think people are all for it. All right, well, let us know. <laughs> let us know. Listener feedback this week comes in from Pappy Mac. Do we have another Pappy? Not Pappy Joe. I want to be very Ooh, specific about that. It yeah. is not Pappy Joe. Yeah. Uh, but we love Pappy Mac because Pappy Mac sends in some great feedback. He says, he rock does. stars of podcasting. John, David, and Bo are the rock stars of pipe podcasting. If you're not listening to this or catching their live show on Monday nights, then you're you are going uninformed and unentertained about pipes, pipe smoking, and pipe tobacco. This podcast is for everyone interested in pipe smoking. Uh, Pappy Mac, thank you so much. That is high praise. We really appreciate it. Absolutely. Uh, next from iTunes uh, comes Big Bald Benny. Uh, he says, you guys have a new friend in Wisconsin. Uh, this show is exactly what I've been looking for. New pipe smokers like me need a show like this. You guys have nailed it. I have listened to close to half your podcast now and have been able to take my new hobby from beginner to well-versed in a little over six weeks. Uh, Bo, thank you for your determination to recognize this niche in a hobby of old that seems to be growing again, and it is. Uh, and thanks to John David for your love and devotion to pipe smoking and tobacco. I feel your enthusiasm right through the radio waves. Spread the knowledge to all of us. Uh, okay, I know that's laying it a little thick, but the point is you have a new friend in Wisconsin. Great job, guys. Man, Big Bald Benny, thank you, buddy. We appreciate Absolutely. it. I'm glad uh, we've been an encouragement to you, dude. Yeah, that, that's that feedback. We always love getting that uh, from especially those iTunes reviews. If, if you're listening to us on your iPhone, go ahead and write us an uh, iTunes review. And hey, if you've got an Android device, be sure to check us out on the Satchel Podcast Player. And uh, if you're enjoying the podcast, send us a couple of bucks that way. Because with Satchel, you can actually support the podcast that you're listening to, which is an awesome thing to do. And if you are listening live... We really appreciate it. If you're not, you can, of course, follow our YouTube channel. Go to CountrySquireRadio.com. Click on the YouTube link and follow that channel because, of course, we do have a giveaway right now until the end of the month. So do it today. Uh, you can find links to that and more at CountrySquireRadio.com. Be sure to also follow us on Twitter. I'm at the Real Bo York. I'm at John David Cole. And you can get us at the shop at at underscore CountrySquire. And, of course, the show's Twitter handle is at Squire Radio. And, of course, also that's our periscope as well now oh isn't that cute isn't that cute yeah that works out pretty well so all right man well you know the great thing is the podcast audience will never know but we've had a lot of hiccups tonight i i don't know what hiccups you're talking about i mean you, you're the one with hiccups you drank that whole glass of scott your super came <laughs> to the door and i had to stay on the <laughs> no dude come on now. That, that that was just part of it right that's all part it's of a, it. it's part of the magic being made uh, once again it's we fun once again, we want to thank you guys for tuning in and checking out the podcast. And Absolutely. Hey, since this one was done in the shop, as we did last last time, we want to encourage you to send us your feedback. If you enjoy it while we're in the shop, let us know because that means we're going to do it more in the shop. If you don't, let us know because we'll do it more in the studio. So we really want to build this podcast and this experience to be about what you guys are looking for. Uh, thank you so much for looking for that experience through us. So. Well played, sir. I well, think that's well, going to well, do it for well, us well said. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man. I had a great time. Me too. Let's go have a night. See you, brother. All right, guys. There we go. <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to leave this up fun. on the YouTube channel or Dude, not. Dude, I think you should. Should I? Absolutely. All right. I mean, I, 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 I don't know. I mean, Live studio audience seems to think that we should. Yeah. I I, I don't know. I'm for it. <laughs> the guy just came and knocked. He was, I mean, he was being friendly. I no, just, no, no, no. I, I, I might be a little bitter we at it. We had him. like five minutes of pre-show as I was trying to get everything up and running. That's, yeah. that, that's my main concern. Well, I, you know, I'm sure, Bo, whatever you do will be the right decision. Don't you hate it when people say that? I really do. <laughs> Look, Bless your heart. It's going to be exactly the right decision. <laughs> this is the kind of the perfect moment, too, because um, this and this is just for, of course, the YouTube show. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, you know, right now it's 730, which right. is our normal broadcast time. That's right. When we do in the shop, we do it around uh, 630. And right. so right now, everybody that tunes in for the normal show is tuning in thinking they're about to watch the regular show. Ooh, but they're just catching the last couple ugly. of minutes. Yeah. But here's the great thing. if you uh, Once we uh, sign off, which we're about to do, you'll be able to actually watch the full thing and its right. completion with all the hiccups, warts, and all uh, <laughs> heading your way in just a couple of minutes. But uh, <laughs> anyway, there we go. I had a great time tonight, man. Yeah. Thanks for, um, thanks for joining us, y'all. Absolutely. See you guys. Bye.